Bismillah Rahman Rahim. We'll see the remaining slides. Okay. So risk categorizing example. Risk categorizing example. See, we have two types like uh, internal and external. So internal is managerial risk. Managerial risk. The risk manager risk is risk of poor management. Then we have technical risk. It is a risk of not meeting time, cost, performance requirements due to technical problems. Okay. What is this management risk? Actually, it is like either it talks about financial, financial risk uh, associated like uh, associated with ineffective, destructive or underperforming management. Uh, it is like a due to ineffective, destructive. or so this underperforming under performing. okay this management risk can be from the factors like investors holding stock in the company and also refers to the uh, investment fund as also related to the investors they if they are not proper or regular and also from the fund investor fund so these are all the managerial risks okay then we have it uh, other thing is external I mean, uh, before that we have technical problems. What is technical risk? Technical risk actually is technical problems like risk associated uh, directly with the knowledge. It's actually risk directly with the knowledge base. Being employed and it's a technical aspects including things like uh, understanding and reproducibility. That is very, very important. Okay, then external. External actually it talks about uh, market conditions. It talks about market conditions, then competitor and uh, customer and supply actions and behaviors. Then it talks about materials, labor requirements, uh, resources. It also talks about political, religious, social impacts, and weather conditions. So these are the external factors apart from the internal factors. It taken into consideration while categorizing the risk. So more on risk categories, we can say there are like um, risk categories provides a way to risk categories. They actually they provide the way to order the risks accordingly to the I mean to the source. And uh, we can see from just taken like current and old. Uh, current is technical or quality performance risk. So what is this technical and quality performance risk? It is actually as a potential to the product, service, program, or project. Actually, it is a potential. It is a potential. Uh, that a product service program or project will not deliver as much value as required so this is really important so the, the actually it is like um, this is a product service and a program of a project it will not deliver as much value as required and it can be applied only to the internal projects uh, outsourced projects uh, purchased of a pro purchase of product or services so it can be actually it can be applied only to the internal internal projects or even outsourced projects so that's what it is a performance risk then pro uh, you have a project uh, risk, project management risk. Actually, it is the process of identifying, analyzing, and responding to the risk that arises over the project and to help the project to remain on track to meet the goal. That is only project management skill. So it actually it identifies, identify, analyze, and respond. That is very, very important. Respond to any risks, to any risks. That arises arises in the project and to help to maintain uh, keep to track and meet goal that is only project management risk then we have organization risk organization risk it is actually a it's a potential for losses due to uncertainty actually due to loss loss due to uncertainty and it is a term for risk at the top level of an organization and it includes uh, material strategic reputation then uh, legal security and operational risks uh, all these are uh, the organization risks so it leads like for example material then 
reputation reputation of a company all this also when it is bad name it loses uh, reputation then legal acts safety legal acts safety all these are taken into consideration as organizational risks then external risks you know external risks are always, always uh, due to the external factors external risks are always due to the external factors mm, like uh, natural factors natural then political then uh, also talks about um, Uh, economic factors yeah economic so these are the important uh, external risk factors and uh, you can see this natural risk factors you know disasters all these earthquakes uh, any if any flood or rain droughts all these are the natural factors okay then uh, there is a change in technology you can see the older one is on a change in technology actually this change in technology refers to the firm which transfers the uh, input actually it transfers the input actually transfers the input to output transfers the input to output and uh, to see how it, like uh, in technological change is a change in a firm's ability to produce a given level of output within the quantity of input so when the input is given you should see the output how what level what is the what is the level of output what is the level of output is the level of output what is the level of output level of output gain so in other words profit okay then we have internal risks internal risks what is internal risks internal risks are given in organization uh, due to normal operation actually this doesn't have any due to risk due to normal operation and um, they are actually it is forecastable you can see that this like because you have some problem in the machine it is forecastable or there is shortage in employees or any problem it is actually forecastable it is forecastable forecastable you can know you can predict you can predict either due to the human either due to the human or technical or due to physical it can be predicted then we uh, unforeseeable unforeseeable is uh, it's not predictable unforeseeable is not predictable okay it is unforeseen uncertain even happens suddenly then external risk it is from the outside external risk is from the outside of the organization uh, so it's it's out of team control is out of team control out of team control okay then we have phases of risk management see we have uh, four phases like um, uh, risk identification risk impact analysis risk planning risk control so risk identification so it is all the risk event in checklists for so example it is a process of determining the risks that could potentially prevent the program or enterprise or any investment from achieving its objective it includes documenting or even communication so actually it is uh, acts as a barrier it acts as a barrier okay so risk identification to determine uh, like to determine the factors that potentially prevents yeah it prevents the project or any program from achieving the objective unit can be also it includes it needs it needs good documentation also good communication okay then uh, risk impact analysis actually talks about risk evaluation matrix so there is a matrix seen like a or a risk even matrix matrix actually is a matrix is talks about um, assessment methods like uh, for example see matrix is like this this matrix is like this like major injuries major then minor minor injuries then uh, no injuries negligible negligible then you have fatality dead fatality here it shows very likely then likely then unlikely then highly 
unlikely so here you say it is uh, for example you give the um, like high 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 low high low high high so like that you give the uh, risk assessment to find out what type of the risk it is then this is a matrix so it's a combination like for example this is minor injuries and it is high unlikely then uh, negligible or it is unlikely so like that it talks uh, it is a risk assessment method to define the level of risk by considering the category of uh, probability or likelihood against the severity so this is a simple mechanism to increase the risk of the management so it is, a, is a, to assist the management in making decisions so it has helps to assist the management to assessing the risk to assess the risk category So what is risk planning? Risk planning, see risk planning is a tactics method in the, in the risk response. So it is, is to identify, to identify, then uh, to prioritize, then to manage the risk, to manage the risk. Okay. So each project or initiative has objectives and goals to accomplish the task. So these are often called critical success factors. So they have um, objectives and the goals so they refer to as CSF critical success factors so these are seen in as a critical planning CSF then tactics what is this tactics tactics is a method is a process of developing options so it is the uh, developing uh, strategic options and determining the act actions it actually determines the actions to enhance opportunities and reduce threats so a team a project team member is assigned to take the responsibility of this uh, risk response yeah they, they take this responsibility okay then risk control. Risk control is a plan, a business strategy to aims to identify, assess, and prepare the any dangers or any hazards or any potentials or disaster, both uh, physically or figuratively, that may interfere into the organization operations and objectives. So they they used to identify and assess any dangers or any hazards which may interfere in the projects and how to control them is known as the risk control factor. Then you have uh, risk identification techniques. So analogy, you know, it's a comparison. You have to compare the examining the previous one, past one, and similar projects. So this is identification techniques. Like, like for any, any, any accident, it compares with the past. Okay, past, previous. Okay, with the future one, how it has happened, whether it has happened by the same... Uh, like the same accident, like uh, repeating the same uh, mistake. Okay, then you have a risk check and list and ranking with matrix. So same matrix talks about the uh, what is the level of uh, severity. Okay, and also talks about risk level and um, impact. Risk level and impact. How it is the how high it is. And then you know brainstorming. Brainstorming. You know it is actually the ranking of ideas. Brainstorming is ranking of ideas and how for example any accident how severe it is how severe is the accident how to prevent for the future how to prevent in future so all these things are then then cause and effect diagram is a fishbone diagram there's a fishbone diagram it's a fishbone diagram it talks like a it's a fishbone diagram It's a fishbone diagram, just like this. So this is the cause. This is for the cause. And this is the effect. So the men, this is the men, material, machine. This is money. Okay. This effect is a problem. What is a problem? Either because of men or because of material is sub problem, either the machine or either the cause of money, a shortage of funds, something like that. So this talks about the um, uh, cause and effect diagram. Yeah. And it's, uh, so it is. Uh, it was framed by a famous uh, Japanese scientist, uh, known as Ishikawa. Ishikawa. 
Ishikawa. He has framed this cause and effect diagram. Then he talks about flow chart. He talks about flow chart and uh, there is work breakdown structures, flow charts, network methods as birth and CPM. For risk analysis also we can uh, uh, figure out the parts. Then data data precision ranking. What is data precision ranking? Actually it's a technique to evaluate the degree to which the data uh, risk uh, is useful for, um, for risk management like to, uh, to which the data about uh, risk is useful for risk management like it involves examining and extent of understanding the data like data available about uh, risk uh, like to involves to uh, data precision ranking it involves examining and understanding examining and understanding the risk so to, uh, it's a technique to evaluate the degree to which the data about uh, risk, uh, the, the, how the data are useful for uh, and, uh, risk managing the uh, uh, risks in a particular area. Then SWOT analysis actually talks about strength, uh, weakness, opportunities, then threats. So these are more factors as uh, strength, weakness, opportunities and threats. So it is a framework for identifying and analyzing the internal and external factors that has an impact on the viability of project, uh, uh, place and person. So it, it is the main three, these are the four factors which has an impact on identifying and analyzing. It has an impact on identifying, analyzing the internal and external factors which has a, a impact on viability of the project product place or huh? person then we have risk responses like what are the risk responses like uh, for example, we have a risk transfer risks like to, uh, to home to the customer, to the contractor, and how you avoid the risk, eliminate uh, safety activities. If you eliminate the safety activities, then if you minimize the complex, uh, minimize the system complex, uh, you can minimize the uh, minimize system complexity. Then reduce when you are reducing the quality requirements. So these are uh, like how to when you avoid this one, you, it creates automatically uh, problem like uh, eliminating risky activities. You can avoid uh, the risk by eliminating risk activities. Also, you minimize the system complex which don't make it don't make the system more complex so that you are not able to go uh, at one point you're not able to control it so it leads to a risk and also uh, reducing the requirements quality requirements not to be there should not be more quality requirements so because quality needs perfection then reduce risks use the best way to do the things and you should have proper method to reduce the this then contingency planning you know this is proper planning should be done before you start the project